Hello Dave, this is Dave from ChiefTutor.com. Thanks for sending in the picture um, and explaining that you are after trying to do this gamble roof. So why don't we go through those steps, but uh, like I did say, if you double click this bad boy, Chief has this cool thing down in roof styles that has all the different roofs broken out. So you can make the jerkin head roof, <laughs> which I just found out. I guess they call it a hip half hip roof which makes more sense but this is the one you're after gamble roof and it's great you click on this bad boy and you wait probably like an hour for most computers mine not too quick not too flaw not too slow um anyways it gives you a little step-by-step -step guide how to do it automatically and how to set it up so you can build it and do all that stuff but we're going to do it the manual way because that's always the easiest way so here i have your model or a model built up it's just a basic box that I've done so far and let's go ahead and start to conquer this bad boy so I'm gonna go up to the second floor and I'm gonna draw the first roof that should probably be on I'll turn my roof layers on and that is the roof that um, goes over the whole building the main gable roof that probably goes over the whole building so what I've done here is I've gone to my roofing tool and I've selected each edge that I want to start off of. So if we go to the camera view, we can see that I've started off of this edge and drawn this way. Now I don't like the height of this guy. I think it's too low of a pitch. So I'm going to shift select both of them. Select on the first one, hold down shift, select the second one, go to the opens tab, change it to more like a 612 pitch, something a little bit more dramatic. Okay, so making the gamble roof over here uh, is pretty easy, actually, if you just understand how Chief thinks about its roofs. So um, as we go in and look at our roof style, and remember, I always like to work when I'm working on roofs. I'll go down to this roof plane layer set because it kind of makes it easier to see things. And you'll see see this long dash dotted line with a little tick that's facing up. That's telling us that this particular roof plane was drawn in such a way that it's cutting the wall at the proper height and it's heading in this direction up to the top peak. And so if this line is just barely inside your wall, that means you're cutting it the proper way. Chief has picked up the wall exactly where a roof would lie on that wall if the room height in this room was set to whatever it is. So for instance, this was set to basically eight feet from the floor to the top of the ceiling. And so it drew the roof right off of that plate height and just drew it straight up. And that's what that tick line means. So that's a little helpful tool when you're working with the roof. So what I'd do is I would start with this wall then. I drag it across and move it up. And see that little dash line with the tick? And it says, hey, do you want to draw over the top of an existing roof? Yeah, of course I do. So I'm going to draw that piece and then I'm going to draw this piece and move them up and click OK. Now what did I do in the 3D? You see it took it right off the plate height and sent the roof plane up. Now let's go back to your picture real quick so we can understand what's happening. We want to start basically off of this point or the first floor and then raise up at a dramatic angle and then change the direction and come up to this top peak. Okay, so what we'd want to do is simply select this roof now and we're going to manipulate the way we want. So we know we don't want it 211 inches off of zero. Zero is this point right here, the floor. So if I were to say more like, let's say it starts at 96 inches and I'm going to hit tab. So at 96 is the fascia top. I'm going to lock that and I'm going to make the pitch something like 20. So it really sends the roof plane going straight up. So it starts here and it starts to come way up. And I hasn't broken through the siding just yet, so I can do that in the 3D. I can also do it in the 2, but you know, I'm just going to roughly mark it out. And I don't want to go too far because it will cut the siding. There, that's good. And so that kind of shows me, okay, the first angle is doing exactly what I want. Looks like I'll need to make my window a little smaller, right? So it can fit within my my craziness of the roof. So this starting off pretty good. In fact, I like this. I think I'll leave it just there because you can adjust it up and down as need be. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. Obviously, you can double click it 
open it up and change these settings or you can literally highlight the plane you want and use this tool which is nice and you can move it up and down the XYZ direction but this is the one I really like I like how it's formulated so I'm gonna remember 20 and 96 and I want to make this one the exact same way so I'm gonna double click this bad boy I'm gonna lock the three pitch but I am gonna change that later but I just want to lock it for now and change this to 96 now I'm going to lock the 96 because I don't want that to change and I'm going to put in here 20 and it should emulate basically what that roof plane's done as well and again I'm going to pull it this time we'll do it in the 2d I'm going to pull it right up to the wall and pull it right past the wall here and I want these to make sure that they line up another thing I want to do is kind of inspect the uh, the, the the amount of space I'm going for so for instance if I take my uh, uh, dimension tool and I start off that wall and I come to here I can see it's four foot two and if I were to take my dimension here I'd see it's much longer see it's at five foot five so let's assume we want to stop around four foot six so I'm gonna pull this guy back till it's four foot six and now they should roughly have the same dimensions so it should start off at 96 and end around this number right here 213 and 3 8 so you simply copy that so you know what it's going to be. Uh, this one, 96, and it's not exactly where the other one is. And that's because of what we will see. Uh, looks like it's, the, oh, it might not be the same. Okay, I'm thinking I see a little difference in the dimension. 4, 6, 4, 6, ah. That's close enough. Okay, so now I'm going to take another roof tool. And in the roof tool mode, I'm going to start on this edge of the roof. And I'm going to click to drag across down the line and move it up and left click one time. That's because I want Chief to pick up the height of this particular roof plane so this one can build off of it. So let's take a look at it in the 3D. You can see it picked up the height of where it was and it starts building off of it. So again, I can do the same thing here. I can click here and drag this way and then I simply select this edge hit number two on my keyboard and select that edge it'll conjoin the two edges and I'm gonna pull that one back to here pull that one back to here and just kind of line everything up so it looks good and there we go there's our start of our gambel now we could probably go a little higher a little wider because what we see is it's just barely getting past the ridge of our roof there right so why don't we do that I'm gonna double click this I'm gonna stick to 96 but now I'm gonna go 22 and here I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna double click this bad boy I'm gonna stick at 96 but I'm gonna say 22 and in doing so I can hit 2 and reconfigure that edge select this edge hit two and reconfigure that edge and it looks like I need to pull that back to there so what I did is I kind of reassigned them 22 got me up a little higher but still not high enough so what maybe I'd like to do is let's take them all and go up well, this time we'll use this tool I'm gonna move it up maybe 12 inches just to give it some more height and you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to change these two pitches. So I know the bottom is correct. It's attached the way I want. But now I'm going to go to, f uh, let's go to five. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And then again, lock the bottom because I know that's right. And I'll hit five. And then I might just need to reselect the top edge, hit number two, and select the other edge. So I'm just kind of gathering those pieces together to make that look right. Now we've got to finish it off by cutting it into the roof. And that's not as hard as it seems, actually. Let me show you what to do. So selecting this edge, I'm going to hit 3 on my keyboard and cut it there, 3 on my keyboard and cut it there, 3 on my keyboard and cut it in the middle and kind of pull it back. Then I'm going to hit 3 on the keyboard again. I'm going to cut it one more time. And let's bring that edge down. 3 on the keyboard, cut that bring that wall edge like that so you can see I've created some cuts to kind of formulate around this guy so then I simply need to touch this edge hit number oh wait I gotta cut it as well so I want this piece here to cut into this roof so I'm gonna hit three and cut it right about there so this edge here is highlighted I can hit number two and to touch it to that edge hit number uh, click this edge hit number two and touch it to that edge 
And so what it should be doing is connecting these dots. So we're going to go here. It looks like it created too many dots. There we go. To this edge. There we go. Number, uh, Select that edge, hit number two, and select that edge. And then over here, I need to cut this one, remember? So we're going to go three, cut it about here, and move it in. Take this edge, hit number two, and touch that edge. That way it would cut around it like that. Okay. Now, in this particular diagram, we could just move the wall in. That's one way to do it. Making sure, and mine was stucco, so I'm going to make it siding. Making sure it comes in flush and covers that area. That's one way to do it. The other way that might be more beneficial is to do it with uh, polyline solids because you can see what's happened here is if you bring it in, it kind of didn't cut around the, the walls inside. So you can just use a polyline solid and have this back to where it should stop, wherever that proper stopping point is, and then do a, a polyline solid. But that's up to you on the inside. For us on all our purposes on the outside, in order for it to look right, I'm just going to move it on over and, uh, of course, color it like this. So that's been Messing with Gamble Roofs here at ChiefTutor.com. Hopefully you've learned something new, and hopefully I went step-by-step step enough to show you how to do it. But manipulating these edges is really the key first, and starting it off at the same point pushing it up at the same angle and making sure the distances are pretty much the same. That way it overall looks proper and correct and all that good stuff. Well, thanks so much for sending in your plan and your question. I'm glad you, um, can we see them both at the same time? Kind of, not really, I don't know. Hey, let's just do this. Ooh, oh, 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 Dave, the real life one looks a lot better. Okay, talk to you later.